We're here with Marie-Pierre Prefontaine, two-time Olympian uh, ski racer, specializing in the Super G in Giant Solemn. Currently, she travels the world coaching downhill racing and is a mountain guide for Extremely Canadian and Western BC, as well as a sponsored free skier, entrepreneur, a woman of style, a badass skier, and a dear friend of mine. MP, thank you for joining us on the podcast today. Hi, thank you for having me. (laughs) Um, for the listeners, can you give us a little backstory? Where did you grow up and how did you get into skiing? Um, yeah, I grew up in Saint-Sauveur, Quebec. Um, my mom is a ski coach, so pretty much had no choice to ski. <laughs> no. <laughs> but um, no, I, yeah, I grew up skiing with it's like a family, um, very into my family. My uncle's also a ski coach. My mom used to race. My aunt was racing on the Quebec team. So it's very much part of my family. And I just grew up following, like going skiing with my mom. She would bring me and co- she actually coached me until I was 14 years old. And um, yeah, it was, we always talked about skiing at the table, at the dining table. And I just, yeah, I grew up in the ski world. <laughs> what was it like being coached by your mom? Um, it was at first it was fine like I she made me actually call her by her name I wasn't allowed to call her mom because then when I was with the the whole team I would go like mom mom like this so she's like you can't just you can't call me mom anymore you have to call me by my name so I would call her Lou or Lulu (laughs) and so it was kind of the same as everyone else on the team and um, it worked out well for a while and I think it was nice to have her because like we would talk a lot about skiing at home too. And it made me understand it maybe a bit better. And she was always like pretty hard on me, I would say, but in a good way, I was never, uh, never felt forced to do it or anything like that. It was a healthy coaching environment until maybe I got older when I was 13, 14, I started a bit like fighting, like responding back to whenever she was trying to coach me. So at that point she said, okay, you need to go to, get coached by someone else and then she just sent me off I got um and that was when I made like the uh, old enough to be fist which is like the international racing and um yeah she just let me go and then but it was still always there and we always talked about skiing which I think was really nice to have for for that yeah so special to be able to share your passion yeah totally and for the listeners that aren't familiar with ski racing, what are the different kinds of downhill racing? So you have a slalom, which is the shorter turns, and then GS, which is was my specialty, which is the panel um, bigger turns. And then there's Super G, which is a bit bigger and like pretty fast, and like there's jumps and stuff in it. And then there's downhill, which is like the straight down the hill kind of. Thing. And how fast were you going when you were doing the GS? um gs is a bit less fast because it's really turny so i don't know probably like maybe up to 70 80k that's fast and then but i did most i did all the discipline i did slalom and downhill as well and i think downhill would probably go like up to 130 those must have been some crazy crashes too when you're going that fast kind of scary to crash at that speed for sure (laughs) I mean, we were watching the skeleton on on uh, the Olympics last night, yeah. and they were going like 125k. So you're going like even faster. Yeah, and you're like in a little spandex suit too. Like <laughs> if you fall, it's like you don't have any not that much protection. We wear a back brace and stuff, but yeah, it you don't want to fall. But the thing is that you can also get as much hurt in slalom or GS, you know, just depend how you fall, but definitely in downhill, like if you hit the fence on the side at that speed, it, it rattles you for sure. Like I had, like I've had really bad concussion on skiing and downhill on like, I fell on a jump and yeah, you for sure. It's, and then how do you carry, but also like fun once you, <laughs> when you get to the bottom, you know, you're like, ah, I want to do it again. But then you're like, at the same time, you're so scared. <laughs> And how do you train to be able to handle that? Um, I mean, like we do so much training. When I was um, on, when I got onto the national team, we would train all summer in the gym, and like we'd get really strong because like you get so much um, force in those turns, and you have to push on your ski to create speed too. So like 
the g-force is crazy and it's really hard like on your back and your knees and all that but yeah we do a lot of training on snow as well in the summer and just a lot of repetition and getting comfortable with the speed and like at one point you're getting comfortable with this mean you just want to create more speed you know like in your turn so the technique and everything so it's just yeah i don't know you just get addicted to, <laughs> to wanting to go fast i guess and do you do you feel like you're still addicted to going fast yeah i love it still <laughs> i'm always like like it's it feels so it's so fun like it feels good to like be fast but like also in, in control you know and like i just love turning and going fast well I love watching you turn on your skis <laughs> um is there a point when you're going so fast that it feels like things almost slow down yeah it can either feel like things almost slow down it depends like for me if I'm like some days like I feel so much in control and like you're going so fast but then you're in control it's totally fine like everything's normal almost and some days I would go fast and feel not so great feel a bit like scared or like back or unsure it really like I feel like for me it really depends on, on the day sometimes do you think that like the what your mental landscape was going into the day would have an impact on, on yeah uh, how well, you're able to handle that yeah yeah was there any so, mental training or yeah any mental training you guys did as well yeah I did a lot of training with um I had a psychologist a sports psych on the team who helped me so much because when I was young, I was um, really good and I would win everything and I was the best. And then when I got to the World Cup level, I never had like any problems with pressure, uh, like having putting pressure on myself. I was like, was just having fun. And then when I got to World Cup level, that's when I was like, well, like I could actually do so well. And like, and all the cameras were there and just like the whole surrounding. And I didn't know how to deal with it because I never had before. And I, um, that's when I started working with a psychologist and it took me a long time to figure out how to um, just ski normally or ski like I was skiing in training. And it's so, it's just like in your head. It's just so dumb sometimes. <laughs> Were there any takeaways or lessons that really stand out to you that, um, that you brought with you into everyday life? Um, and how to handle that pressure of, um, living up to expectation um, or, you know, having to perform under pressure. Yeah. I mean, if I always had such a hard time like performing when I had, like when it was time. And I think the biggest thing that helped me was just breathing, like focus on my breathing and just like, I feel right. And you're like focusing on your breathing, everything kind of slows down. And that was a huge that was the most helpful thing because when I was in the start a lot of the time I was just like my legs were already so tired and I could I wasn't breathing properly I wasn't like my brain couldn't even function properly like I feel like I couldn't see well and just like yeah breathing and and just real like try to think about like I was thinking like okay this is what I, I I love to do this is what I I'm here like um, I need like this is what makes me happy and just like just going back to that and just breathing really helped me and that's when I started to be able to um, have that's when I started to have like better results is when I was able to just like take the time and relax and just the breathing was it so just like focusing on like breathing, but it's just, not at the same time <laughs> and what kind of breathing was it just focusing on the sensation of of breathing like inhale exhale or was it a yeah. specific type that really helped you just focusing on breathing and even the night before the race I could sometimes I would even sleep at all and just like breathing focusing on like the breathing going through my body just like meditation I guess kind of and just focusing on on that really helped me and it took me such a long time to figure it out or to figure out what was working for me but yeah it was a, a journey to to be able to to perform the way I was like training just that and it took me a long time but I did it and yeah it was definitely a lot of work <laughs> but like I'm I'm thinking it's so like everyone think thinks it's so much work when you have to train all these hours like train at the gym and do all these um weight sessions and like ski a lot and stuff but in the end for me it was really like the mental side of thing that was really hard for me 
and still to this day, I'm still learning so much about how to, um, how to deal with that. But that for me, that was my biggest, uh, um, the hardest thing. But. I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. I feel like when the mental game is strong, it's when we have our best days and it could be the year that we feel like the least physically fit. Or yeah, like when you totally. really, like reflect on that day where you had this like breakthrough aha moment or like your best performance, it was yeah. usually like had to do with how the whole day unfolded and how the night before was and how you slept and what music you were listening to, what food you ate. Like it's such a complex combination yeah. of things to like arrive at that point. And um it's really cool. It seems like nowadays it's like, there's a lot more focus on meditating and breathing and yeah. you know, speaking to a psychologist of like anything that might be getting in the way that might, you might not even think is related to how you perform. Yeah. And some days, yeah, exactly. Some days it's just like everything lines up and you feel good. And like, and you're like, how did that happen? Like, you don't even know how it happens sometimes, you know, like it's, it's so tricky. It's such a, a tricky thing. And some people are so on it and they're so strong whenever like the time, like world champ, like you're, they're so strong on that day that they need to be and they're so focused, but it's, I don't know how, like, it's such a, like some days it, it's good. And some days you're like, what the heck's happening? Like, I don't know what's going on. So it's, it's really hard to figure out, well, at least for me, but yeah. I'm, I yeah, totally so, like, feel but, the same. Yeah. And it's like competition or like having, being in these environments where we have to show up, it's kind of like highlighted more, but I think everyone's day to day, we're like so hard on ourselves, but like, sometimes you wake up and you have a good day. Yeah. And sometimes you wake up and you have a tough day and you don't know why. And it's like, just learning how to be okay with that. And knowing that like the next day, having faith that the next day you're going to feel better, or maybe it's going to be the day after. And, yeah. And just being yeah. okay with that. Yeah, totally. It's Yeah. Was there anything else that competing taught you that you've been able to transfer over into your day to day? Um, I think just, I don't know. I, I mean, I've always been like such a competitive person, but I think um, to be honest, like one thing that I can say about when I was racing is that um, ski racing is such, or it was when I was there, there the coaches and and trainers and stuff it was you have to do it a certain way you know and that's the only way that works and for me it wasn't like I was always a, a bit like fighting the system in a way because I'm like no like this is not how I want to do it but then I would get like almost like forced to do a certain way that I didn't feel it was working for me it's like such a strict like it's kind of a bit of an old school like meta like strict sport a little bit just because I don't know it's been there for a while it's not like a I don't know how to, what I'm saying, but um, yeah. yeah. There's like a longevity to it. Like it's been around for a really long time. There's like a history yeah. in ski racing and just yeah. to paint a picture for what people, um, for what you were experiencing, say when you were in Europe, like there's a whole lifestyle circulating yeah. around that. Like how many people would be attending? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it would be like sometimes 30, 40,000 people at the bottom of the race. Like it's crazy over there. It's like their national sport and it's huge. And, it's, and I'm just, I just felt like when I was on the team I was like a bit always fighting the system and I wanted something different because I was not I, I feel like I was functioning a bit different than some of my teammates were all but um for me not it didn't always work the way that they wanted me to do things and in the end I like I was trying to change to be something that they wanted me to be and it, it wasn't really working in that way how they wanted to so it was at the end I was just I got just really tired and I was still like doing really good results, like top 10 in the World Cup, which is really good for me. But the only thing I wanted was to just go, go home. And I didn't feel like good, even when I was having good results. And when I left that last year, I came back to Whistler and I just free skied for myself. And it was the, I, I think it just made me realize that I'm like, I love competing. I'm a competitive person, but I've always loved training. I always loved like the feeling of a turn or like the, how, like to understand how, like how it makes me feel good and just to improve just for myself. Like I didn't feel like I needed to like com compete necessarily, like improve or just like be the best. I just love skiing because it, I love the feeling of it. And I think the whole time I was on the team was a great experience. And I love, it was my family, the girls loved the girls and had um, met amazing people. But in the end, I just 
like taking a break and coming to Whistler for free skiing, it just made me realize like, I just love skiing and I love the feeling of it. And I love improving on, on my turns or on just like what I'm doing. And that's really, for me, that's what, why I love skiing. It's not, it doesn't necessarily mean competing and, and winning. It was, it's just really the feeling of it and having fun and just being with my friends and like the, like the whole world of it, like helping each other and all that. That's what I love about skiing. And I think that's what something that I've realized after I retired from racing that like the difference between when I was racing and when now I'm free skiing and it's just like, I can choose my, how I do things and my path compared to before I was very like, I was pushed in this like way that they think I should have been doing, but I, I was always a bit fighting. So now it feels nice to be able to do it how I want. Oh, that must feel like such a great feeling to feel like you have your power back and your freedom. And it sounds like you've really fallen back in love with skiing. Yeah, <laughs> I love skiing for sure. Like it's always, there's always like, you always try to figure out how to, what you want to do or like your objective and like there's ups and downs for sure, but it's nice to be able to do it the way you want. And I'm what? happy. I still like love skiing so much. I'm happy I didn't end up and ski racing and just like, ah, I don't want to ski because I don't love it. I still love it so much and even more than when I was racing. Yeah. Cause that totally happens, right. When people just get so burnt out and then they, they kind of just want to throw over it and they just move on to something else. So I'm happy to hear that you were able to stay in it and still do it because you love it. Um, I mean, I hear you say that a lot. MP and I are really close friends and it's the objective is always just to go out and, um, you know, obviously ski fast and ski fun objectives, but just to like have fun with friends and, and be out there, which I think is um, something that can be so easily forgotten for anyone that's getting into anything in a competitive way or trying to make a career out of it. It's such a fine balance of like balancing out your sponsors and your PR stuff and training and trying to take all these boxes and being like, am I doing it for the love of it and not getting burnt out because you hate the politics out of it. So yeah, it's such a fine line sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. You want to, you want to do stuff, but then you're like, ah, oh, like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You're totally right. I mean, yeah, that's just how I feel. I feel like we all go through it. Um, yeah. What are you looking forward to this coming year? Is there anything in particular? Um, I just I hope it snows soon. And uh, <laughs> um, no, I, I mean, one thing that I would love to do is to go ski spines with you one day. <laughs> we'll make it happen. Because <laughs> um, I've never skied spines and that's like, would be really cool to, to get the opportunity to ski something like that. Um, goals, I mean, I just want to have fun and ski with you girls, my friend and my friend, all my friends in Pemberton. I'm going on a little trip to Colorado, so I have that to look forward to and to ski some couloirs and fun stuff. But um, I don't really have plans, big plans, but um, I'm just kind of going with it and see what happens. <laughs> I mean, I feel like your compass is pointed in the right direction if it's just to have fun and ski. Then you're going to win no matter what. It doesn't matter what the conditions are. And uh, is there anything else that you'd like to share with the listeners? Um, any advice for um, women in sport? Um, I mean, I that I had um, actually last weekend we had a girls' day with uh, Extremely Canadian, who I work with. I do um, so. Extremely Canadian is in. Whistler and we guide people on the mountain and we give steeps clinics so we bring people um, out of a bit of their comfort zone and bring them into the steeper um, runs in Whistler and um, the couloirs and all the the cliffs and the, all the gnarly stuff up there and we had a girls day and I thought um, I don't know it just made me think because I feel like um, a lot of times um like we just, I feel like I get really unsure of myself and um, I end up like maybe sometimes not doing certain things that I want to do. And it made me realize that like, I think it's as um, girls, it's important to like not be scared to like look dumb or look slower and just 
still go for it and try it and not put like any limitation on ourselves because in the end of the day when I feel like whenever I try to I end up trying even though I'm scared to look silly or slow I always surprise myself so I just um want to say to um don't limit yourself and just send like go for it anyways and don't be scared to look dumb and and go have fun <laughs> that's such great advice <laughs> um, <that> sense? <laughs> totally yeah thank you so much for joining smp it was uh, such a pleasure to have you <laughs> thanks and stoked to get out on some big mountains with you this winter yeah please soon sounds good um have a great day you too bye <laughs>